Uh, this video will look at rural settlements, which forms part of the settlement section of the geography syllabus. So when we look at rural settlements, a rural settlement is defined as a settlement which is unifunctional and is associated with primary activities. In terms of looking at the site and situation of rural settlements, of course, site and situation, exactly what they are, I have discussed in my introductory lesson to settlements. When looking at the site in terms of a rural settlement, we look at the availability of fresh water, fertile soil, fuel source such as wood for fires, grazing land or um, arable land, building materials, topography, um, we're looking for flat land versus hilly land, uh, the local climate um, as well as aspect. Uh, when we're looking at situational factors with regards to rural settlements, we look at distance to the nearest town, transport routes, communication links, um, the surrounding environment. Is it a mountainous region? Is it located on a coastline, uh, close to a railway, etc.? We also look at its location both regionally and nationally within the country. Then we look at a wet point and a dry point settlement. I have gone through them. Just to recap, a wet point settlement is a settlement around a water source, particularly in a dry area where water is scarce. When we're looking at a dry point settlement, it is a settlement on dry land in a wet area to avoid flooding. When we're looking at pattern with regards to rural settlements, we can either have a dispersed settlement uh, with multiple houses far away from each other or a nucleated settlement where a lot of houses are clustered together. In terms of some of the factors that promote each of the patterns, factors promoting a dispersed um, sort of pattern in a rural settlement, poor soil, so people spread out to in search of the little um, fertile soil that there is. There can also, on the contrary, be an abundance of fertile soil, so there's no need for the farmers to uh, nucleate together. They can settle anywhere. Uh, reliable water supply, climatically or from rivers, so they don't have to cluster around a central water source. Um, they can spread out accordingly. A uh, few perennial rivers, of course a perennial river is one that flows all year round. People move to more reliable water sources. Um, a hilly landscape, uh, this can promote people settling um, on flat land, um, on the little flat land that there is available, leading to them sp spreading out. Then we look at private land ownership. People move away from others in order to farm so that they don't have to only take portions of the profit. Then we look at capitalism. Um, on the contrary, obviously, to um, communism, there's no need to share farming equipment. They have their own equipment. Then some of the factors promoting nucleated settlements, uh, limited soil fertility, so farmers nucleate around fertile soil, perennial water supplies um, lead to farmers nucleating around them. So if you've got a permanent river with permanent water, you'll often have um, farmers uh, nucleating around that river. Uh, wet point and dry point settlements, which I discussed earlier, are both examples of nucleated settlements. Collective land ownership, which ties in with this thing of communism. Some farmers might get together and share costs and as a result um, take portions of the profit. Traditional farming methods call on the use of collective machinery. So they may co-own machinery and in times of war for um, security reasons. Then we look at some advantages and disadvantages of both dispersed and nucleated patterns with regards to um, rural settlements. First, we start off with advantages of dispersed settlements, uh, privacy, farming independence, and a healthy environment, disadvantages, social isolation, which can lead to loneliness, technologically isolated, um, as well as crime. These areas may get targeted by petty theft because they know that no other settlement is watching them. Advantages and disadvantages with regards to nucleated patterns. Advantages, obviously, um, people can be social around one another, share technology, and there's less crime, more security because people are looking out for one another. Disadvantages, there's a lack of privacy, a lack of independence, and a less healthy environment due to more people being concentrated there. Then if we look at shapes of settlements with respect to um, uh, rural settlements, we look at round settlements as a result of physic 
um, the physical layout of the land, so such as a hilltop village, round villages may also con concentrate around a focal point, such as a dam, etc. Linear settlements, these settlements develop along a line. The lines are determined by um, physical and man-made features. Some of the physical features that could promote linear um, settlement shapes include rivers and valleys, or and then some of the man-made um, features that might promote linear um, shaped settlements uh, situated along canals, a road, or even a train line. Then we look at cross or T-junction settlements. Here are the diagrams showing these settlements. Settlements develop where transport routes intersect to um, attract the largest possible target market and audience. Traders settle permanently in the area. Um, as the population increases, the settlement may lose its shape. Um, obviously expanding more into the outer parts. Then we look at types of farming present in rural areas, subsistence farming, basic functioning on a daily survival basis to provide food for the family, no surplus food is produced, limited input and output, mixed farming, so often farmers farm more than one crop, or they can even farm crops and livestock for milk and meat. We look at commercial farming, Farming which is run on a commercial basis, designed to produce as large of a surplus as possible to sell for profit. The main thing with commercial farming is profit. Large inputs and investments are made to maximize output. In terms of input, we're looking at research, equipment, chemicals, etc. Normally produce only one crop, uh, which is known as monoculture. So um, in contrast to your subsistence farming, uh, the commercial guys will only farm wheat, for example, or only farm um, maize, for example. Then we look at commercial farming, which can be split up into both intensive and extensive farming. Looking at intensive farming, a type of farming where the output or the yield per hectare and the labor input are high in relation to the farm size. If we look at extensive farming, the type of farming where um, it's a type of farming where the output or yield per hectare and labor input are low. Farms are often large, which is easy to remember because extensive looks at that largeness, um, and most processes are mechanized. Uh, then we look at rural settlements with specific um, sort of with a specific outlook as South Africa. We get three different types of rural settlements. Traditional villages occur, occur all over South Africa. Unplanned settlements built by African tribes, dominated by subsistence farming. Tribal chiefs allocate land to different landowners, um, and the villages are nucleated, but dispersed from each other. So what that essentially means is a couple of houses will be nucleated, but then they, that couple of houses will be dispersed from another couple of houses which might be another village. Then a betterment settlement formulated by the apartheid government to settle Africans in homelands. The policy was to group Africans by culture into separate development areas where services could be provided. Um, very structured in terms of residential space, farming land and grazing areas, which were obviously cordoned off accordingly. Then we look at dormitory or closer settlements. These, uh, as the betterment settlements became overcrowded, these uh, dormitory settlements were introduced into the homelands. The idea was to spread the settlements plus minus um, 200,000 people in these dormitory settlements during apartheid. No farming was allowed. The population would be used in white areas under strict control. Uh, that concludes the video for rural um, settlements, their shapes, classifications and patterns. Um, in the next video, I'll be examining some of the issues uh, regarding rural settlements. Thank you.